Hi, I wanted to do a vlog of how I'm taking pictures of the bearded vulture and many other birds but as you have seen or rather heard there was so much rain it was just impossible to do a vlog up there so I thought I will just do this here back home where it's warm and quiet. I have visited this location already a couple of times trying to take pictures of the bearded vulture and sometimes it worked out, sometimes it didn't but luckily there were always other birds around so I was always busy and in the end of the day I always managed to take at least some pictures home with me and today I thought I will just show you some of these pictures and videos and also explain a bit how I was proceeding when doing taking the pictures like what camera settings did I use, what lens or teleconverters did I use and so on. So I hope you can learn something from the video or at least have a nice glimpse into the wildlife of Switzerland. As mentioned before it has not always been very successful and I've actually been twice in this location the last winter and the first day one was one of these where it was really not successful. It was a couple of things that were not working out so the bearded vulture was not showing up and this was mostly because the wind was quite strong and also it came from the wrong direction so there was no good thermic for the bearded vulture to fly up there and come close to us but luckily there were still some other things to do and this was taking some pictures of the songbirds that were around which were mostly the snow finches and alpine ascenders and even though it's not the most comfortable for these pictures I actually liked that it was quite windy and even snowing a bit because this kind of environment and these weather conditions just show better how the birds are living and what kind of environment they need to deal with on a daily basis and in my opinion just make the pictures a bit more interesting if you have some out of focus snowflakes in the background or if you see some of the feathers of the birds that are really not in a nice shape anymore because of the strong wind which can easily be up to 90 kilometers an hour which, which I think would translate roughly to 50 uh, miles per hour for you that use the imperial system and here one thing to watch out if you take these kind of pictures is I would avoid to point the lens directly into the wind um, usually there was no stones or something flying around unlike on a beach where it can really damage your lens with these small uh, sand or gravel particles flying into your lens the problem here is more just the snowflakes that are hitting your lens and while this does not sound too bad in the first place um, especially if the lens is a bit warmer because it has been operating for a while you might have the issue that the, lens, that the snow is melting on the lens and afterwards you have water droplets and thus this just doesn't look good on the pictures so I would avoid this in the first place and position myself in a way that I'm shooting either with the wind in my back or with the wind coming off one of my sides and obviously the lens hood can help a lot to prevent snow coming on the front of the element even though I also need to say it's a bit harder to handle the lens with, uh, with a big lens hood mounted when there is so much wind because it just provides a huge surface for the wind to basically attack and produce kind of a drag. I was shooting mostly with my 600mm f4 prime but to be honest there it's not really necessary to have such a expensive um, and fast lens you could have achieved really similar results with a, let's say RF 100 to 500mm or maybe even an EF 100 to 400 a Sigma 150 to 600 because at the end of the day if I'm shooting small songbirds I usually feel that with f4 the, sh the depth of field is just too shallow for my taste because then only a part of the bird is sharp usually this means even if it's completely parallel just the face is sharp and already the body is not sharp anymore or the tail is not sharp so I usually tend to stop down a tiny bit anyway let's say to f7.1 f8 
at least if I remember to do so, and then it really doesn't matter which kind of lens you're using. I would also like to add that in these circumstances 600mm was almost an overkill and there were some situations I actually needed to back off. So I would always have almost have preferred a smaller lens, let's say a 500 f4. It's more handholdable, especially in these windy conditions. Um, and you have a, a closer near minimal focal distance and this would have made everything a bit easier. So in the first day we didn't have a single picture of the bearded vulture on our camera. We didn't even see the bearded vulture. So we went back another day where it was completely sunny. Um, the wind was way weaker and came from another direction. So we were kind of crossing our fingers and hoping that it would show. And in fact it did and it was really cool to see it up close. Especially if you consider the history of the bearded vultures in Switzerland or basically in the whole Alps. Um, they have gone instinct due to hunting and it was only in the 1990s when they started to reintroduce them again in the Alps which is super great and they're still continuing to reintroduce new bearded vultures into the wild so I really hope that this time the population can stay and grow over the next years or decades. Back to the technical side, was it easy to take pictures of these birds or not? Well, on one hand, they're quite big. And if you try to take pictures of them uh, in front of the blue sky or in front of the distant mountain behind, that is like, I don't know, 30, 40 kilometers, 20, 30 miles away, not an issue at all. It's super easy. Even if you don't have the newest camera with the best autofocus system, this works quite well. Um, they're not flying extremely fast and they are quite big. So again, you might not even need a super big telephoto lens. On the other hand, if they were coming really close in front of this rock wall that you can see in this picture here, it was way trickier and both I and my friend Nicolas tried to use the eye autofocus, uh, in my case with the R5 and I think he tried with the Z9 and it was in both cases not really working well. So really showing the limits of the, of the current tech that we have. So basically we went back to using the single point autofocus and this was then okay. I mentioned before that it was quite a sunny day and you might think, but isn't this a problem with all the contrasts? Usually I'm saying you should go early in the morning or late in the evening if there's really a sunny day with no, with no clouds on the sky. And this is generally true, but I have to say for the bearded vulture it's a tiny bit different because you need to imagine that they're flying over a huge area covered by snow and this snow is so bright. I mean. Usually you need sunglasses because otherwise I find it quite annoying looking at it the whole day. And this big snow works kind of a reflective shield. So instead of having shadows all under the wings of the bearded vulture, this snow is reflecting a lot of the light. So in the end it looks kind of uh, evenly lit and you don't see really harsh shadows even though it was a quite sunny day. So it's really nice that at least for once you can shoot in every condition snowy, cloudy or sunny as long as the wind is coming from the right direction so the bearded vulture is actually showing up. Of course while waiting for the bearded vulture there was another species that was really nice to take pictures of and what that was the alpine shaft. Since they are quite used to people basically all over the mountain if they see that you're there maybe eating a sandwich or just waiting for a long time they come by and they're almost tame. If you take a raisin in your hand and hold it up, they might come and get it. So this is a great opportunity for some wide angle shots or doesn't even have to be like a wide angle, a 60 millimeters or something like that. Even with 35 or 50 millimeters, you can already try to get some pictures with a nice mountain in the background. Even though I need to say it was not as easy as it sounds, um, there were quite some people up there and it was a bit hard to really go close with the camera without disturbing other photographers or having other photographers in the frame. I was mentioning the eye autofocus of the R5 before and this time I thought I want to try something that I never succeeded in the past and that was taking pictures of snow finches in flight. Um, and actually it worked this time with the R5. It took a couple of uh, trials until I managed. As the biggest problem was not always the autofocus, the biggest problem was rather me being fast enough with the really long 600mm to follow the bird. And second of all, I was often not really happy with the background 
I would have been okay with a completely white background. This could also look kind of nice, almost a high key shot. I would have preferred the gray um, rocks in the background, but what sometimes I had and really didn't like was basically a mixture that you had some snowfield in the background, then some rocks, then some snowfield again. And this was just giving like a layered background that had a really high contrast and in my opinion was quite distracting. But in the end, I ended up with at least one picture that I really like. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the images and videos and maybe also the technical comments from my side. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and enable all notifications so that you will also learn about new videos that I'm bringing up more from the Alps, maybe in summer also from the marmots that back then were of course still hibernating. So see you soon and have a nice day. Bye.